This is going to be a Cognex video tutorial to explain to you how to set up the image with your Cognex. So first open the Insight Explorer 5.6.1, double click here. And when you open it up, this is the first image you'll see. Um, this is a blank spreadsheet view. Because it's we haven't done anything yet, there's nothing in the table. On the left hand side, you're going to want to see a camera here. And if you see the camera, that's great. That means that you set up your Cognex correctly and that both your computer and the Cognex are on the same Wi Fi network. So now to open up the Show Easy Builder view, this will just give you a different layout. Um, <clears throat> here you'll now on the lower left hand side, you should see the camera again and you want to connect to your camera. Once connected, you can start a new job, you can open up an existing job, but right now we, um, we're going to start a new job. It says, are you sure you want to clear all the data from the current job? Well, there's nothing here, so we're not clearing anything, and by default, Cognex always opens up with a new job. So we're going to click yes. So start a new job, and now we want to set up our image. So right now the screen is black. It's kind of hard to tell, but there it is what the Cognex is seeing right now. It's just that we haven't set up our acquisition settings. So first what we'll want to do is set this to continuous, saying that's a continuous trigger, meaning that if we're running it on um, this uh, repeating trigger, we'll continuously take images, or if we're running on live video, we'll continuously take images as the video updates. So trigger interval, this is fine as is, exposure is what we're really going to need to change. So depending on the lighting in your area and depending on the um, how many objects or what color background you're using, you'll need to have a higher or lower exposure. I've already set mine up so I know that we need about a nine. And so now you see the workspace we're using, and here's the object we're going to identify. So as you can see, it's still kind of blurry, and this comes down to our focus position and autofocus. So you can click autofocus. I prefer to use the actual um, settings here in the focus position. Now to make it even easier, I like to zoom in using one of these, so you can just zoom in a little bit or you can zoom in to one by one of the workspace. I like to zoom in on the object in the workspace and just try a couple different values to see what... Okay, see, and now we have a very clear image. So you go up and down a little bit, make it more... Okay, so now it's getting blurrier. But I think 109, this is the most clear it's, it's looking at us. We can go back to the main view. As you see, we also have this grid background. And these are all one by one squares. So we can zoom in again, go kind of towards the center of the image. And we'll want to calibrate this. So now we have the actual sizing of the workspace. So down in calibration type, you have the option to calibrate using pixels or um, some of these, these are all other options, but we want to use edge to edge. So here we're going to select two edges. So we'll choose this one. Two, we'll go with this one and this one. And we want this to be in inches and one inch. So now the entire workspace will be um, calibrated this way. So it's one inch by one inch so that it'll know the actual dimensions of our object. The other thing is uh, classic orientation, which is X on this axis and Y on this axis, or I guess not classic orientation. And this is the one I choose to use, but that's all up, up to you. 
Um, there are some other options here. If we want to go back to our main view, click white space balance. We'll just um, update the image based off the white space. Currently, this isn't really an issue since we have all white space. And then setting the white balance. You see a slight color change. Um, and this is just, these are all just things to update and improve your image. So the next thing we'll want to do um, is if this object moves around, so right now I'm on the setting where I have to click the trigger every time something happens. So I'm going to move my object, click the trigger. Now you'll see that the object has moved. So this is everything as far as setting up your image. In the next tutorial, I'll explain how to locate and inspect this part.